Dun, 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 dun. Hi, James from England. We always do very serious lessons, well, kind of serious lessons in my case, but usually, you know, we stick with the grammar, the idioms, vocabulary and whatnot. And every once in a while, it's just kind of fun to find out where words are. There's nothing wrong with learning for learning's sake. In fact, when you learn that way and you're having fun, you're probably want, going to want to learn more, okay? Even myself, I taught English for at least 10 years, probably longer, gosh knows. Every once in a while, I'm fascinated when I learn the history of something that I didn't know existed or, you know, why we use this instead of that or there used to be something else. It's fascinating. So today, we're going to have a bit of a fun lesson where you're going to learn about English words. You're still going to learn how to use them, but we're going to look at words that actually come from you, the viewing audience. You guys always watch us. Now we're going to return the favor and tell you about words that come from your countries, your languages that we brought. Okay? So these are words from around the world brought for you by Mr. E. You can see our globe is here. And we're going to take a first look at our visual words and then we're going to uh, do a few others and give you some definitions. Are you ready? Let's do the first one. What could be more American in the world than the hamburger? There's McDonald's hamburgers, Big Boy burgers, just burgers, right? The hamburger and the hot dog are American as apple pie. But what if I told you the hamburger is not American? Right now, there are about a million Americans having heart attacks like, don't take that away from us. It's American like apple pie. Like an American German apple pie. <laughs> You'll see in the country Germany, there is a place called Hamburg. And the hamburger wasn't served on a Bun. That, that I have to give to the Americans. They put it on a bun because you know they're lazy. I didn't say that, guys. I mean, but they don't want to use knife and fork, so they use a bun. In Hamburg, they had the patty, the beef patty, and they would eat it that way. It took an American to put some bread underneath and bread on top and have that patty that way. But it, hamburger was originally from Hamburg, and it was just a meat patty. Didn't know that, did you? That's right, Americans. I've got more. <laughs> What's next? Popular instrument. If you love jazz, no, that's not even a saxophone. I don't know how to play. Go watch The Simpsons and watch Lisa Simpson. She plays the saxophone. I had a teacher named David Mott, great guy. He also played the sax, professional jazz player. Sexy instrument. Now, saxophone, it sounds very French, no? The French people right now are going, of course, it's magnifique, it's ours. It is a phone, it is a sax. I've got news for you. Bloody Germans. Well, not Germans. This guy's, this time, the guy's from Belgium. His name was Adolf Sax. Okay? Adolf spelled PH, so you got your PH here. Saxophone. It was his music machine. He's from Belgium. Belgium? Except for the muscles from Brussels? Jean-Claude Van Damme? Nothing comes from Belgium. And chocolates. <laughs> but they also made the saxophone. Cool? There you go. And I got one more for you. Canadian, eh? Finally, the Canadians are like, we're on the map, dude. <laughs> News for you. Machiavellian, which means devil-like, right? You think it's Canadian? Maple syrup, hosers, hockey. No. Italiano. The Italians invented this. This guy's name was Nicolai Machiavelli. He wrote a book 500 years ago. And this book was so bad, the church didn't like it. And they called the devil and Machiavelli when a person has a bad idea. Yeah, I know it's a bad Italian accent, <laughs> but you get the point. We take a lot of your words, we use it in our language, and you come and say, English is so difficult. And I go, yeah, it is, because they're your words. So we've done these ones, and what we're going to do now and so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do that magical disappear thing. And I'm going to introduce you to some other words that have been brought into English in our everyday lexicon or dictionary that we use regularly and give you some expressions that we might use them with. You ready? Let's go on our world tour. And we're back. So we started with those first three words, if you remember. Uh, we talked about the saxophone, the hamburger, and Machiavellian. And we noticed that Words that seem to be English actually can come from different parts of the world. We're going to look at a couple other words now, or a few, that come from not just different places, but different times in history. Are you ready? Let's go to the board. All right, so, Spartan. Some of you watched the movie The 300. This is Sparta! Which is this, a, this was a Greek city-state about 2,000 odd years ago, all right? 
Spartan means severely simple. It means it's not just simple. Simple is nice. Water is simple, but severely simple. Uh, simple. It's hard to describe. It means very strongly simple, but hard, harsh. Harsh means strong, um, but in a negative way. So they kept things very, very simple. Okay. So when somebody says this is a Spartan existence, it means there's nothing much. Maybe you have one chair, one bed, one pair of pants, one shirt, and that's all you have. A Spartan diet would be very simple. Maybe you would have four vegetables, two fruits, and two pieces of meat. Nothing else. No cake. No put the Fanta down. No Fanta. None of that. You're living a Spartan existence. Whew. Tough. Okay. We use these as some expressions. You might say a Spartan diet. I gave you an example of that. No cake, sugars, and that. Just the simple basic foods. You kill it. You eat it. What I kill, I keep. That's it. That's Spartan, son. A Spartan existence, you know that cell phone, bring a dee, bring a dee, bring. No cell phone, no internet, no TV. Yeah, that's right. And your game box, your goodbye. Spartan existence, chair with no couch. Ooh, couch is gone too, baby. You're lucky you get to sit down. You got a bed and you got a chair. You go to work, you come back, you go to bed, you get up, you do it again. Nothing else. Oh, and working out like Arnold. Spartan existence, maybe a book if you're lucky. That's a privilege. And a Spartan upbringing. Some parents are very strict. They will say something like no television, only on the weekends, no candy except you know, three times a year, uh, you know, one present a year. You're going to have a lot of discipline. That's a Spartan upbringing, which means all of the things that many children enjoy playing out and doing, you don't. You would be working, sleeping, going to school, being strong, eating basic foods. No, not a lot of fun. Disney World? Goodbye. All right. <laughs> so when the people talk about Spartan, it's very simple, very basic, and it can be harsh for many people. Very strong. Let's talk about Bedlam. Bedlam means chaos. Chaos means it's out of control. It's crazy. Everything's going over noise, people running, fires, whatnot. It's total Bedlam. No control, no leadership. Funny because Bedlam comes from a famous English mental hospital. They were crazy. <laughs> Absolutely not. They were a crazy house and they were so crazy. People would refer to a situation being bedlam and they go, oh my God, is it that crazy? This is bad. We have to fix it. They tore down the hospital, but it's from a long time ago. And that's where all the famous mental people went. Mm -mm. All right. So when you talk about bedlam, you talk about chaos. Things are just nuts, out of control. Chauvinist. This is funny. This comes from a guy from France who loved Napoleon so much and thought Napoleon was the best. The French people were the best. I know there's some French people right now watching going, we are the best. <laughs> uh, you're not. <laughs> Nicolas Chauvin thought they were fantastic. So the name became used for anybody who thinks something is superior to other things. It could be men superior to women, one religion superior to another one. Um, if you think your country is superior to another, you're a chauvinist. A, a person who greatly believes in the superiority or the greatness of your people or your group to others. All right. Boycott. I like this. Can you imagine this? A long, long time ago, laddie, in Ireland, there was a guy who had, uh, he was a landlord. We have a video out about property and ownership. Go check it out. And it's got landlord. It explains it. It's a person who owns land and people live there and they pay rent, monthly money to stay or food. Anyway, this guy was so bad. His name was Boycott. He was so bad that the people in the town socially isolated him. They wouldn't talk to him because he was mean to the tenants. Like maybe he wouldn't give them water to drink or he wouldn't let them have their food there. He was so horrible and he wasn't even living there. He just, he was what we call absentee landlord. He didn't live there. He did nothing. Now, these people isolated him socially. So when you boycott, boycott something, you refuse to do, deal with or deal business with somebody because you say, you're so bad, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Now, you can't boycott a friend. I wish we could, but you can't boycott a friend. It's to boycott someone that you would do business with so they will eventually lose money and hopefully change their ways, right? They do it for countries as well. They boycott them, right? Finally, mentor. In English, we use it, people use it every day and think mentor is somebody, and it's true, it's somebody who's loyal and they advise you. They're, they're smart, they're wise, and they advise you. They give you good advice to help you do well in your career, usually career or sports, right? They, they help bring you up through the ranks, help you move up. 
But funny, this word is from Greece, from thousands of years ago. There was a poem, well, we call it a book, but it was a, a huge, a gigantic poem called The Odyssey. And in this book, the hero was named Odysseus. Think of uh, Batman, Spider-Man, Wolverine. All of those guys, without the superpowers, without the super uniform, he was a guy. <laughs> okay? But he went and traveled the world and he was trying to get back home. And he went on, that's what the Odyssey is called, traveling. He went on a big journey to get back home. And he had a good friend. And his friend's name was, guess what? Mentor. His friend's name was Mentor. So, you know, all the smart people in the world went, hmm, Mentor was his good friend and he gave him good advice. Why don't we call everybody who gives a good advice and is loyal a mentor? And thus the word was born. Ta-da! So we've gone from Greece, France, Belgium, Greece again, London. We've, well, well, we didn't come to Canada. I put Canadian, but we never came back here. One day, there'll be a word that will be here that's strictly Canadian. That day's not today. Anyway, once again, we have our little quiz, the mini quiz, because you're going to take the bigger quiz after, right? And we're going to see how well you learned your lesson today. Are you ready? There was something in the streets when Japan beat Brazil in the World Cup. Think about it. Japan, I love you. Your people are beautiful. You cannot beat Brazil. If you beat Brazil in the World Cup in the next couple of years, there would be what? People would go crazy. They would lose their minds, right? There would be bedlam, chaos. Trust me, the Brazilians would go crazy first. <laughs> then the rest of us, like, really? Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> okay, what about number two? Mr. E thinks that women are not as smart as men. How can he say that? How can he think men are superior to women? Clearly, ladies, because I love you ladies, you know that's not true, right? Right. I think Mr. E is a what? He's a chauvinist. But we would say here he is a male chauvinist pig. Male indicates he is a man and he thinks men are better than women. So a male chauvinist pig is what Mr. E is. I always liked that worm. We've been together for years, man. Anyway, finally, number three on our quiz, which I know you're going to get the answer to if I give you two seconds. One, two, done. Your time's up. <laughs> her father was strict when she was a child. She had a what? So her childhood, she was getting up, upbringing. What kind of upbringing would have a strict father who wouldn't let her have a dollies? And, well, she was a girl who played with trucks, man. She didn't play around. She had a Spartan upbringing. Remember we talked about when the father is strict and you have very few things? She had a Spartan upbringing. And that concludes our lesson. It wasn't Spartan in any way. We gave you all of the frills and we traveled the world. A small odyssey, you might say. <laughs> and I digress. Anyway, listen, it was a great lesson. Thank you for coming here once again. Love the fact you interact with us. We love your comments. We do look at them. In fact, one of the lessons coming up I have is on one of your comments. But before we go there, I want you to go to a special place that's in my heart, okay? Um, I am a bit of a chauvinist on this because I do feel that Ingvid is very good. Forgive me. Um, but Ingvid, I just mentioned it. WWW, the three W's, right? Then Ing, as in English, if we do it this way. Vid, as in video. Or I'll turn it around. Oops, I can't remember. In England, don't, don't look because I did it wrong. Okay, Ing, <laughs> ingvid.com, okay? Uh, where you'll see myself and a lot of other fantastic teachers who can teach you as much wonderful English as you like. I hope you enjoyed the lesson to give you a little bit, bring a little bit of you to us because we appreciate what you've done for our language. Have a great day and don't forget, go do the quiz and press like, all right? Sign up. Bye.